Good morning. I'm Pratap Singh Gaikwad and welcome to another episode of the Bagi Khana. Sundays don't get any better than this. First, a long drive away from Mumbai to this stunning location. meet a dear friend and talk about his special cars. I mean, this is the best Sunday I could ever dream of. Good morning, Neville. Good morning, Pratap. Nice to meet you. Pleasure and welcome to the Bagi Khana. Thank you. Thank After you. many conversations of trying to persuade you yeah. to be on the show, you finally agreed. So thank you very much for that. I mean, let me first start by talking about the location that we are at. I mean, it's just outstanding. It's, it's basically a petrol head's paradise. I mean, you, you couldn't script this any better than it actually is. I mean, Stunning views, beautiful house, a garage, a special private haven, mechanical haven for yourself, where you get to Thank tinker you. away and, you know, play with your cars. I mean... Been a long time in the making. Correct. Almost, I think, six months now. Yeah, yeah, I six know. Six or seven months. And uh, finally, you're here. Nice to have you. I'm finally here and I've enjoyed, you know, up to this point, I've enjoyed every part of it. The drive was amazing, you know, just yeah. to get out of Bombay. Correct and to breathe this fresh, fresh air, air yeah. is, I mean, it's, it's a paradise on its own. So, you know, we've known each other for a long time. Yeah. And uh, it's, I mean, we've only spoken about cars actually. Correct. And we've only sort of met at sort of car meets or at uh, a friend's car garage. Correct. You know, we've, we've not really had any interaction outside of that uh, space, yeah. sort of space. Yeah. So, and I don't have to tell you guys that, I mean, this is the true definition of what a, a petrol head really is. I mean, you, you sort of uh, tick mark all the uh, categories when it comes to that. Well, it's just, I think, God's grace that I've had these opportunities come along as we've sort of progressed in life and sort of, you know, it's just sort of generically gone through and sort of I'm lucky and in many ways to sort of possess these cars that I have. You know, everyone has a bit of a story behind it right. and how it sort of came to be, you know. Right. But so, before we get to these cars, let's start from the beginning, right? How did this, how did this get into your blood? Well, uh, frankly, it's all from my dad and he was also a petrol head. Right. And he always was sort of, always was car crazy and sort of, you know, how the Parsis are crazy about his cars, you know. Right from his college days of, you know, sometimes, some things that I never did was nicking the car and sort of going on, sort of going to college, going to Panvel for having fun and, you know, then having issues on the way back and sort of, sort of stemmed from all that and sort of um, when he had the, I mean, from the earliest time we had the Maruti 800 and we had a house in Lonavla and sort of, you know, we used to tinker with the car, put this little add-on, add a couple of horns, put two uh, spotlights in the front and stuff like that, you know, so it all sort of in a way stemmed from that and then when I had my own Maruti 800, sort of the first thing I did was I wanted to sort of work on the engine and that's how the passion for uh, tuning actually grew, you know. Right. So worked out the head, put in a cam and then, you know, enjoyed the car. Then came the second Maruti, then I got the 1000 in which sort of the agreement was that I will take the 1000 off him 
only on the condition I can put an steam engine inside. So <laughs> he said, okay, fine. So I went behind our office at Prabhadi, we went to Vitesse, sat with the guy and ordered the steam engine, you know, and then gave it to them. They installed the engine inside and modified that. And then that led to putting the twin cam GTI engine inside with twin Webers and sort of that happened that I enjoyed. And then came the Honda City. So I enjoyed the car the way it was. Then sort of I said, you know, then the internet with the admin internet was reading a lot of stuff on the net, seeing in America what the same car was doing with the same engine. So I said, why not put a turbo on it? And sort of I went around getting the stuff and successfully put a street turbo on that car. It was really quick. Auto car did the review on it. And uh, they were like, they were mighty impressed, you know, because yeah. sort of compared to the regular city where they sort of would do a zero, 160 kilometer, or zero hundred mile uh, timing. Mm. Mike, I was 10 seconds faster and Hormuz himself said, you know how much 10 seconds is? <laughs> One, two, three. That's a <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> yeah, that's a lifetime. So, yeah. and then I got the uh, Skoda Octavia VRS because at right. that time, I think after that, I got this car. Right. So, when, when was it? Which year did you get this? So, one? I got this in 98. So, okay. it was an original import by uh, another petrol head hmm. who had built this car in America as his... Uh, engineering project you know so okay. i guess in america when you're doing automotive engineering at the end of the year right. they let you build your own car right so that's what he did in college hmm. and then the family moved back to india's dad was from indore so they moved to indore he moved to bombay with the car and sort of he was not finding his feet so probably wanted to go back hmm. so he wanted to sell the car it was too expensive to take it back and through another friend uh, who had sat in my honda and my s team at the time well, sort of said that Neville, take a look at this car, it's an ideal car for you, it's fully done up, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, why don't you come and take a look. So I went and saw the car, drove it, took my dad as well. So initially, I, once I drove it, I said, wow, this is, I need something else, you know. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, the V8 bug, I mean, that, that part I left out, <laughs> the main V8 bug came from my friend Himanshu. Okay. Himanshu Sindhi Jadeja of Gondal. Right. So back in the day, when my thousand was modified and we had a hill climb in Pawai, I sort of beat him in his Corvette, the ZR1, for the yeah. fastest time of the day. And he was a school friend, you know, as it happened. Okay. And then, of course, he contacted me, let's meet and this, that and the other. And he, that's the first time he took me for a drive in the Corvette back in Bombay. And uh, we went up to Hanging Gardens. He stopped the car. I said, come on, you drive. I said, seriously? <laughs> anyway, I drove <laughs> and that was when the bug happened, you yeah. know. Sort of. And then I went to his place in Gondal, drove so many V8 cars. We had a Chevy also, a Chevy Suburban, which was a V8 back in the yeah. day. Dad's car, of course. Mm. And so always came to Lonavla for 20 years in the Suburban every weekend. And then this car came along, you know. Right. So, of course, Dad, of course, agreed straight away. Okay, fine, let's buy it. Mm. And uh, I sort of played a little part by telling that guy, you know, don't step on the gas within there, he gets a little scared, you know, mm. because I didn't want him to see the potential because then he would have <laughs> definitely battled, it's too fast, you know. Yeah. Then after many months of driving and finally I took him in the Corvette one day and then I told him, now you sit in our car and see. Mm. And he's saying, my God, I think I made a mistake, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, generically sort of things went forward, the drag meet came along, the car was already modified, so I drove it in the drag meet, I won in my category. Yeah, that's how I remember this yeah, actually, yeah, from yeah. the drag meets. Yeah, I used to drive it to work three times a week, so from yeah. Kolaba to Prabhadevi yeah. and park it at the petrol pump, you know, right. and enjoy the car. So, right. sort of it's, it's in my life from that time, you know, I've sort of grown with the car, I've put in a lot of stuff, taken out a lot of stuff and sort of come one full circle now, you can say in life that I want it nice and drivable, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so it I mean, is pulled back a little bit yeah. and still it's got its essence, right. which I'm still working on to bring the original essence back, you know. It's too, frankly, it's too quiet now. So, okay. the essence <laughs> of the Mustang, the rumble is gone now. So, I'm going to do that now in the coming year, you know. Good. So, I think this is this has been the special car in your life. Yes, in a way, absolutely. Because it's, it's absolutely. been with you for the longest time. Yeah. And uh, this was, I mean, I think it's very different from anything you had earlier. Yeah. Right? Right. So, I think this is special. Can you tell us a bit, you know, about... Uh, the specifications, what, what year is this car? So, this is a 1985 Mustang, hmm. Fox body, what they uh, uh, always were known as, with a 5-litre V8, with a Tremec T5 transmission. So, when I got the car, the engine was completely modded by him. Hmm. It was, I think the stock engine used to be 185 bhp. Right. And uh, he had modded it to close to about, I think, 250 or maybe 280 bhp. 
then I sort of made some changes and I think it went to about 300, 310. Hmm. But the beauty of these Mustangs was that they were very light. They were not like the regular Chevys and all which were I think at about 2000 pounds and this was down to about 1600 or not 1600, probably about 1700-1800 pounds, okay. you know. So they were very quick off the line to start with. Yeah. So when I drag raced the car, you know, always typical American car, traction is an issue. So launch was an issue, but once I was out of first, hmm. then the pull from second, third, fourth was tremendous. And I used to pass cars past 60 miles an hour, I would pass them on the... So initially the regular cars would run away. Like I had one instance where uh, the I was against an Evo, you know, an hmm. Evo uh, 6, I think of Kunal Kapoor. Hmm. So of course on launch four-wheel drive, he moved away, then come 60 miles, I passed him. You know, and he was yeah. looking at me, I remember him <laughs> looking at me like this. Yeah, so, so those are those are quite quick as well. Yeah, those are very quick. Fun yeah. cars, very quick. But you know, this is the essence comes after about 100 kilometers an hour, you know, yeah. because it keeps pulling because of the big engine. You yeah. Know? And what's the fuel consumption like on this? Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best I've got is probably five and a half. Right. With the okay. nicest, <laughs> nicest way of driving, and the worst is about two and a half. Right. And I think even Americans and the Ford company, you know. <laughs> You could tell the era of car yeah. by also looking at what was happening with fuel prices Correct. at that point Correct. of time. Correct. Because Correct. I, I think the model before this yeah. was a six-cylinder. It was also a four-cylinder. They had the 2.3-liter four-cylinder turbo. Right. When they sort of the gas prices and then the gas guzzler tax came in America. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think slowly they came out with again the V8, you know. Right. I, I think, think that's that when the, the gas issues sort of yeah, went down. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, get, yeah, uh, yeah. So this, this car was, in, in the same car, they also had the 2.3. Okay. The 2.3 uh, from SVT, what they would call, you know, special vehicles, right, something. Right. So this had the 2.3 as well. So, frankly, this car is a 85 and a half, what they would call, hmm. because it had fuel injection, the first version of their fuel injection, okay. you know. But the guy who I got it from had uh, removed the fuel injection and put it back to carburetor because at that time, it was much easier to tune and those old fuel injection systems were very, very difficult to tune, you know. Right. So when I redid the car, I did find the ECU and the wiring harness in the uh, right foot well, you know. Okay. So the ECU was still there with the wiring harness coming out and stuff yeah. was disconnected, you know. So right. that's where we are with this car, you know. You Back in 2017, I had a sort of an unfortunate incident hmm. where the car caught fire, sort of hmm. broke my heart because it was an original 1985 car, you know, original carpet, original interior, dashboard, everything. Right. And um, had a fuel leak, car caught fire and sort of it, sort of pretty much the front half of the car was burnt. So, I mean, of course, the same evening I swore I'm going to build it back the way I wanted, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, as luck would have it, my wife very sweetly stepped in and sort of told my dad, you know, this is what's happened and he's distraught. Hmm. So, I came home in the evening and he said, go and buy the new one, you know. So, I said, seriously, but I'm going to repair this. There's no two ways I'm not going to repair hmm. it. He said, okay, whatever you like, but if you want, take the money and go and buy a new one. Anyway, so, as God's grace, again, like I say, I'm lucky. Thursday evening, this burnt, paid the money on Monday and uh, next Thursday, I delivered, got the delivery of the white one right. in Rajkot, you know. Three, four years rebuilding the car. Right. So, all the dreams of having big brakes and independent rear suspension and rebuilding the engine to... I mean, all the dreams that I had over the years, I sort of had the finance and stuff like that to build it up the way I wanted, you know. With Alcantara right. on the interior, because these cars came with plastic. Correct, yeah. So, Alcantara on the interior, bucket seats, the Recaro bucket seats, embroidered and big wheels and I mean you name it I mean whatever the dreams I had I, I said now yeah. this is the only time I'm going to build the car 
and that's it, you know, yeah. put all my effort into yeah, it. So they know. say through adversity, you get new opportunities absolutely. as well. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And that's absolutely this thing in this car, yeah. Yeah. Now that you have both of them, yeah. how, do, how would you compare the two? <laughs> it's <laughs> miles so apart, yeah. I mean, that's absolutely smooth as silk to drive. Right. Factory 400 bhp, absolutely smooth, beautiful handling. Yeah. I mean, for the reliable price, also, very reliable. Very reliable. Cars, yeah. Okay. Frankly, for the price, you get a GT. You know, for the price of say, I think about 65 lakhs at the time. Yeah. Where do you get a GT with 400 yeah. bhp, 400 foot pounds of torque? You know, Correct. alloy wheels, Brembo brakes, climate control, everything automatic. Apple CarPlay for the interior, bucket seats, leather. Yeah. I think the everything. closest, the closest for the AMG would have been at least one and a half crores, yeah. or maybe yeah. more. Yeah. You know, that pricing was actually perfect, spot yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and and of course the shape, the yeah. shape is the biggest attraction to yeah. that car. You know, yeah. because they sort of copied the 64s and brought it in to from the to the 15, 17, and then the 17, 19, which was this year. You know, right, right. Sorry, I think the 12 to 15 and 15, 17 was this model year. And then they improved the shape a little bit more and sort of rounded it more. But for me, this is really nice because I like more geometrics. I don't like rounded shapes too much, you know. Right. So therefore, this car and even the six is more geometric. And that's what I sort of like in my cars, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, India has uh, always had a soft spot for Mustangs. True. Right? Everybody, True. I mean, True. Mustang is, a, True. is very, very... True. Uh, sought after, very popular, yeah. everyone likes a Mustang. Yeah. But having said that, this shape, yeah. I find, you know, there, there aren't many of these. No. In fact, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the only one I've seen. Mm. So, any there are a few. how many? There, there are, are a few, probably another three, four. And because my friend Kaisar had one, he had okay. I think an 84. Right. And he sold that to somebody. And another friend of mine had a 86 Cabriolet in Rajkot, okay. a red color car. Right. And that was sold to somebody as well. So I was surprised to see that one. But um, other than that, I've not seen many. Yeah, yeah I've not. So maybe I've there'll not. be four or five, I would say, in right. India at the most. Right. At the most. So again, so numbers of, I mean, because again, for us, India is the market as well, right? I Correct. Mean, uh, you can't import these. Correct. Much. Absolutely not. Yeah. So in, in this market and also this era, right? They called, I think, now modern classic. Correct. I think this would fall into modern classic. Into yes. modern classic. Yes. And. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the space which is of a lot of interest. I mean, to me and also to the market as we are seeing. Correct. Because again, these were cars that were there when we were sort of growing up. Growing up, correct. right? Yes. So for us, you know, the immediate attraction is really to to cars like this. Correct. And correct. Uh, yeah, it's a natural attraction for us, especially. I mean, yeah. for me also. I mean, I like Fords and I like BMWs as well. But for me, I like cars. Like today. If I had an opportunity, I'd love to have a Camaro in my garage. Mm. I'd like to have a another Chevy in my garage. Okay, and mm. maybe a Dodge as well, you know, like a Dodge Hellcat or a Challenger or something like that, you know. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that sort of, in a way, completes the muscle car yeah. uh, collection in a way, you know. But of course, they're not possible to import to India right. because they're all left and drive inherently. And yeah. uh, so, yeah. I mean, you know, sort of I'm attracted. And like I said, I was very lucky. I was not looking for a Mustang. It actually fell on my lap in a way, yeah. and my dad was there to support me to sort yeah. of do but it. But that, that's again something that happens, that once you're in this space and you're yeah. talking to people, exactly. because people that's often exactly ask what me, happened. how did you get this car? Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like, yeah. it's just because you're in the space, people yeah. you're speaking to, yeah. and it just naturally sort of you, it gets attracted, and there you True. go. Yeah. I think also the important uh, aspect of these cars in this era is the driving pleasure. Correct. Right, because Correct. again, it's a way... It's modern classic, but it's away from the classic. Correct. So you have m many more of the modern amenities which are there. Right. Uh, the suspension is better, the brakes are better, yeah. the steering feel is more planted. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, uh, you, you, can, you, you really go back in time, but you, you really enjoy the drive. So, if you like, I can show you the engine. Yeah, so please. So, 5-liter V8 fully done. Right. And uh, sort of everything is custom done, the wiring. The engine, it's been custom painted and stuff. It's got headers and, you know, mm. all the stuff that you can do to a 5-litre V8, you know. Right. So, it's pretty much got everything, you know. So, if you were to make a broad list of all the uh, things that you've done, let's say uh, engine, suspension, brakes. Long list, Is very, it? very long list. <laughs> I don't think I can put it on verbally. I'd probably have to write it down. And that you probably need a few sheets of paper. A few sheets of paper, yeah. <laughs> if I go into the nitty-gritty, yes, a few sheets of paper, yeah. yeah. Starting from the engine, transmission, drivetrain, yeah. 
Rear suspension, front suspension, air conditioning. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. just a long list, a very long list. But I guess, you know, having your own private workshop yes. also doesn't help because you just <laughs> start Absolutely, working yeah. on things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Opening up as well. Yeah. Great. So the other thing you said that, you know, uh, you had the incident when yeah. the car caught on fire. So prior to that, the car was a different color. Yeah, it was a white colored car. Right. And uh, it was a factory white, hmm. actually, I think an Oxford white at the time. Right. And uh, he had put the saline stripes on it. So hmm. uh, I, I forget the first name of the gentleman, but saline used to modify these Mustangs and, you know, put yeah. uh, interior uh, stickering on the car stripes. So it right. had the saline stripes on it at the time. Right. And then when I sort of redid the car, and mm. I already had that white one, I said, why have another white car? Originally, mm. my plan was, yes, I wanted exactly the way it was. Mm. But then I said, why not do something different? Mm. So I chose this color because this is, a, this is also a Ford color. It's called the Ford Lightning color. Okay. So the Ford F50, F-150 Lightning came in this color. And I like the blue. Right. Sort of blue is my color in a way. Yeah. So I selected this color. I said, why not spray it in this color? And I think it's turned out pretty well because white was very muted for the yeah, car. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what about the uh, bonnet? What have you done to the bonnet? So the here? bonnet was a regular uh, flat bonnet with a slight uh, sort of a lip here, hmm. a slight uh, raise here. Hmm. So hmm. back in the day when sort of I used to do the car with my friend Rishad Kundarmal, hmm. I said, Rishad, we need to do the bonnet. He's saying, you do what you want, then we'll do the rest. So in the original line, I cut the bonnet with his guy. Hmm. I bent it there, we raised it up put in spacers and then Richard filled it all back in with me with his guy you know okay. and that's how we got our natural scoop right. and this sort of curvature etc we designed to hmm. sort of let out the hot air as well it has a dual purpose it's not only show right. it does let out a lot of hot air from the engine over the car instead of just under the car like it was originally designed right. you know so better cooling much better cooling and sort of keeps the engine bay a lot cooler especially when you're driving slow hmm. uh, there's so much heat in the engine area, area being a V8 and then the headers, etc., generating this heat, the fans are pushing hot air. So, almost engine temperatures are close to 70 to 80 degrees centigrade, you know. Right. So, this helps by reducing it to at least, by at least 20, 25 degrees here. What about the interior? Can we just have a quick look? So, the interior was um, an original Mustang interior. Hmm. So, I, with good luck, I got another whole dashboard from America, hmm. a center console, a new blower unit and yeah. fitted everything. We. I got Alcantara, I got it done in Bombay, the, on the dashboard, hmm. the seats, the door panels, yeah. the roof, the pillar uh, uh, covers and hmm. all that. Hmm. So all that was done in Alcantara. Yeah. Put in original carpet back in yeah. and built up the car, you know, step by step to what it's supposed to be, you know. And to get parts and stuff for this car is not, now it's not an issue or is it? No, parts are available, but like for the dashboard, it was just by chance that I spoke to somebody and I asked him, for a bonnet mm. and he turned out to be a salvage uh, dealer. Mm. So I said, do you have these? He said, yeah, I have it. Mm. So I said, send me pictures. He sent me pictures and as it turns out, turned out, I got a spanking dash from a 86, okay, and uh, put it into the car. It came with this original wiring harness. He sent me the car wiring harness as well, which I uh, put into the car. Mm. And uh, sort of the center console is also from a 86. and. I don't know how, with God's grace, I would say that it came absolutely spotless. There was not a scratch on any of the parts, right, you know. Right. So it looks as if it has always been there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and also generally American cars and parts are quite reasonable. Very reasonably priced. So very reasonably way, priced. It's, yes. uh, much better. And, and nowadays, like you said, in the, in the because you've been through all those eras, like yeah. in the 80s and stuff. Yeah, you were not importing anything. We were Correct. trying to fix everything. Exactly. So that exactly. that phase has also now changed to. Uh, to the point that it's almost if something doesn't work, you just, you just replace, change, it. replace yeah, the yeah, part. Yeah, very true. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's still expensive because there's yes. a lot of duty we have to pay. Absolutely. But uh, still worth so it. So it's almost, I mean, depending on the part, it's a, a regular, like a small part would be uh, about at least 70, uh, 60 or 70 percent to the cost of the part. Right. You know? If it's right. a big part, then freight plays a major role. The weight of And yeah, it can size. go to 100 percent more. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. So like you mentioned uh, Pratap earlier, this car sort of came into my life at that time because of my dad and also hmm. from the point of view of a bike, you know, that Honda was imported from by him from the UK, from right. the Honda showroom right. and sort of was sold much against my wishes of course. Hmm. 
and uh, I've been following it for almost 30 years. I found somebody, found the person who had it and sort of he did a good deal and eventually said, no, Neville, you know, since this was your bike, why don't you have it back? You know, and of yeah. course, with the support of my family and my mm -hmm. wife, especially, we managed to get it back into the family. You know? yeah. Well, I mean, that's why you've got many other cars, but, you know, again, I was drawn to this bike yeah. because of the story. Correct. You know, yes. I mean, for me, the story of the bike, of the car, I mean, yeah. it, it just makes it so yeah. much more special okay. when I hear the, the back story to it. And so uh, still, this is under a bit of works. That's where you see some bits are missing, but sort of, you know, it was restored, but it was not used. So sort of yeah. now I'm doing up the brakes and doing up a few other bits. I and think bobs, the work so. will never end because I mean, you, yeah, you work don't will want never it end, to. Quite <laughs> frankly, yes, so. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, but, yeah. But I want to still ride it. I rode it the other day after about 30 years for the first time. Right. And uh, found that the front brakes were jammed. So now, I've, again, that's another old thing. So the yeah. parts are on the way. So and are there any good driving roads around here? Yeah, so there are a lot of roads down uh, onto the main road and across the lake, along right. the lake this way. Right. There are a lot of nice, nice tarmac roads, you know. So luckily the roads have been maintained well here for the last now, what, three or four years, you know. No, I mean, it's, it's lovely because you live in Bombay as well. Yeah, And then exactly. you have... This slice of heaven right true, here. True, very true. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's it's the story. I mean, the bike is gorgeous. I mean, uh, she's looking great, even though there's yeah. little work as you mentioned. Yeah. But uh, pretty much in pristine condition. Pretty much, yeah. As well. It's been fully restored by the gentleman. The important to use it also, right? I mean, yes. all of these cars, I mean, yeah. while we have them, if yeah, you the main thing them, is to use them. You have to use them. I mean, personally, feel low if I've not driven one of my cars and I see it standing for more than three weeks. Yeah. Like this monsoon has been so heavy that I don't use the cars that often in the monsoon. Right. Because they just sort of, in a way, get very dirty from the underside and the whole car itself wears. Yeah. <sighs> this last three or four months, I've barely driven the Mustang or this BMW, yeah. you know. Hmm. So now I think now, in the next week or so, I should start driving it properly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Monsoon is always dreaded by all of us. Yeah, true. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's not over as yet. So please stay tuned for the next episode.